Hello Aquarius, welcome to your weekly reading for September 2nd to the 8th. This is for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, and Rising, and you know we're going to jump right into it. Aquarius, welcome. This is the big new uh, new moon in Virgo. This one's going to be really big for you, but before we even get there, don't, don't forget, okay, don't forget on September 1st, the day before Uranus, your ruling planet went retrograde. And as I said, in your monthly forecast, these retrogrades are, um, the bookends are really strong and you may really feel it, uh, uh, not only because it's Uranus, your ruling planet, but there's something else happening that I'm going to tell you about in a second. Uh, Pluto also went retrograde way back into Capricorn, left your side, moved into Capricorn for the next few months. That's going to be your 12th house. You're just going to be processing a lot of things. And there could be some things, uh, that come up with home matters, family, children, the foundations of your life with this Uranus retrograde in Taurus that rules your fourth house. Uh, but just know that there even could be some radical changes happening, new structurings, new systems in your life that you're starting to see and you are starting to shape and form yourself as well. Okay. Other thing I don't want you to forget is that Venus is in Libra this week in her domicile. She thrives here. Venus in Libra is absolutely amazing. Venus in Libra is uh, your ninth house, by the way. So a lot of it's attention, emphasis on your spiritual growth, on spirituality, your higher mind, even education. You could be taking some new courses or going back to school or, or just learning something, gaining knowledge. Uh, there's, there's, uh, because you also got the North node and Aries in your third house. That's so there's, there's a lot happening for you, Aquarius. There's a lot happening for you, but anyway, there's also publishing matters, broadcasting, uh, and long distance travel could be big themes for you around this time. And Mercury is no longer retrograde. Mercury has gone direct. It's still in shadow, but it's gone direct. Okay. Now on September 2nd, the new moon in Virgo, it's happening late around my time around 10 PM Eastern standard time. So depending on where you live, just adjust the, uh, just adjust the time zone. Uh, it's, uh, could be September 3rd for, uh, you know, some of y'all like really, really in the morning, uh, for y'all, but even still 10 PM, my time, Eastern standard time. Now this new moon in Virgo is happening at 11 degrees. And this is what I was talking about earlier. 11 degrees is actually linked to Aquarius. It's linked to you. You may really feel this breakthrough energy, especially because your ruling planet is going retrograde the day before, but also Uranus will be trining Pluto. Trining Pluto, okay? Trines are incredibly auspicious, makes things, you know, effortless for you, but you you may really have this breakthrough or hit the ground running from the get-go, from the beginning of this month. Now, this new moon in Virgo, remember I said 11 degrees, okay? It's happening on 9-2, September 2nd. 9 plus 2 equals 11. So 11, uh, 1 plus 1 equals 2, as we know. Uh, so 2 is a really big energy in, in numerology for this new moon around this date. And I know that 11 is a master number, but I'm going with 2 for many reasons. One, it's happening on the 2nd. <laughs> happening on the 2nd. Also, 2 is linked to the moon. Okay, the number two is linked to the moon. And uh, two is a very feminine number. So is Virgo. Virgo is a feminine sign. The moon, very feminine. So that's what I'm going with two. You're welcome to, to go with 11. 11 is just a higher, pretty much just like a higher vibration of two. But this is intuition. It's, uh, you know, empathy, sensitivity, creativity. A lot of these energies you're going to feel, all right? Now, the etymological root of Virgo is the virgin, the maiden. So that feminine energy. And th I'm going to tell you why, it, you know, it really is, you know, like purity is what, uh, you know, Virgo is known for, but purity of self taking care of self. That's why health is so uh, associated with Virgo. Now this new moon, think about new harvest. Okay. Harvest Virgo, <laughs> Virgo season. Uh, and don't forget we are in Virgo season. So the sun is in Virgo with a new moon in Virgo. Uh, so there is, Definitely with new moons, new beginnings, this new thread, this new story brewing in your life. Now, Virgo rules your eighth house. Aquarius, this is deep. This is deep and really big. Okay? Keep this in mind. Keep this in mind. You're going to see themes of this month. And I said this in your monthly forecast because uh, you've got Saturn and Pisces in your second house. Now you got new moon in Virgo. We're in Virgo season. We're moving to the Pisces Virgo axis all of 2025. 
So anything that happens this month is really going to give you an idea, this glimpse, this window into what your life is going to be like in 2025, especially with finances. Saturn and Pisces in your second house. You're going to see Saturn very active. Uh, and then Virgo in this new moon Virgo in your eighth house finances. Okay. But it's more like shared resources, inheritance, investments, bonuses, commissions, loans, uh, paying off debts, joint bank accounts, things like that. All right. Uh, the big money energy, big, big, big money energy. So set intentions, put your energy out there. You want to be able to take action for, you know, everything that, you know, set yourself up for where you want to be for 2025. Eighth house is also death and rebirth. So there's this new you for me that with this new moon, there's this new you, there's this new path for you. It's huge. It's big. Okay. Eighth house is also, uh, you know, there's this depth to the eighth house is intensity with love and relationships so a lot of big energy here now if, you know just so you know there you could be ready moving into this cadence into this rhythm uh in terms of your daily routines that's what virgo is it's also decluttering streamlining things in your life especially the mind to remember virgo is mercury ruled um but just think health healing self-healing habits uh, harvest all the H words. Okay. All the H words, but really, really, uh, focusing on health for yourself. All right now. Uh, and when I say that it could be, you know, fitness, wellness, uh, you know, mental health, all of that, you could be going really deep. Virgo loves researching, analyzing, very analytical. Remember Virgo is striving for perfection. So you could maybe be thinking about like, uh, you know, uh, what are these vitamins? Are they good for me? You really like research it. Like, should I buy a Peloton? What are the benefits? Are they even cool to have? You may really start re like going deep into researching, uh, you know, is ice water great for my dog, uh, you know, because Virgo rules pets. So uh, there may be some, you know, uh, pet stuff here in terms of health, fitness, wellness for pets as well. But anyway, just there's some commitment that you may be making last Virgo season, by the way, I cut processed sugar from my diet. So that, that's just an example of, you know, uh, supporting yourself, like self care. Okay, self care. Uh, now, because it is a new moon, remember, there could be some new roles that you're moving into in terms of work because Virgo also rules work but in terms of your responsibilities your duties so just you know it's it's it, you could be on this path there's there's some new path that is likely opening up for you okay uh you know there may be something with partnerships relationships here too only because Mercury is still in Leo at this time and you're you know that's your opposite sign so there could be something here where you may be negotiating with a partnership relationship uh, it can be love, romance, it can be work. All right. Now, um, where are we? <laughs> oh, and then it's all about service to others. That's something that Virgo is highly known for is this dedication and, you know, hospitality is a big thing, but in terms of helping others, supporting other big uh, you know, people, person, energy, going out of your way to support, help, heal, uh, you know, being emotionally driven to do so, maybe even intuitively driven with this eighth house energy for you. But uh, I'm a Virgo moon, by the way, my, you know, my moon is in Virgo and, you know, my natal chart. So I like helping others. So, you know, that's kind of like what I'm talking about here, but definitely set intentions. Okay. Now Saturn is going to be opposite the new moon and the sun. So remember Saturn has, you've been working with Saturn's energies. It's just, you know, there may be, it's like, it may just appear that, you know, your path is getting steeper, a little bit steeper and steeper. There's probably some gnats or something. You got like wave off and you're just like, ah, that's what Saturn does. Right. Uh, but you got a, you got a sunset to catch. You got the good camera. You got, you know, um, if, if, if you got Elijah Wood at the top of the hill, you know, handing out, uh, you know, uh, 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 iPads, whatever it is, like you're going to get up there. You're going to get up there. You're going to seize the moment. You're going to work with Saturn's energies. All right. You've already been doing it. Saturn is, by the way, when I say you've already been doing it, Saturn is your ruler. Saturn is your traditional ruler. You're, you know, Saturn well so it, and you're the geniuses Aquarius you know I'm proud to say that because if you're new to my channel I'm an Aquarius but you know it, the innovators right the innovators and 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 it, you get you know you know your traits Aquarius so uh it really is just 
again, with Saturn being in Pisces in your second house of finances and income, it is, you know, there could just be some changes that you're adapting to. All right. We'll talk more about it. You see it's actually happening on Saturday, but you're going to feel it, it with this new moon. So definitely continue to just set intentions. Go catch that sunset, though. Go catch that sunset. And remember what I said. This new moon is linked to the full moon lunar eclipse in Virgo in uh, March 2025. So uh, remember everything that's happening out now is kind of like it's giving you a, like I said a glimpse to 2025 and it's going to have to do with finances and money and income and it's going to be a big a big theme north nodes moving into Pisces by the way your second house of income finance so money's going to be finances it's all going to be a big theme for you okay when it, when we get to 2025 but you're going to feel it throughout this year starting now starting now in in September uh and Listen, if you're not here for money, if finances is not your game, if if, if, if if you are, you know, the king of Norway watching this video, sitting on gold bars or like, Jimmy, I got enough money. Like, tell me something else. All right. Second house is self-worth, self-value. It's, you know, uh, even material possessions. It's uh, you having that sense of like, I'm worth this. Right. Like it's 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 bringing that confidence here. Uh, now, Mars squaring Neptune on the same day of the new moon. I've talked about this in your monthly forecast. Um, it's just, you know, just uh, avoid. Neptune brings out illusion, delusion, confusion, escapism. Cut through that fog that Neptune brings, okay? Cut through that fog and you're going to be fine, all right? I just, you know, know your reality. Know your reality. Know what you want. Ask yourself, am I being honest with myself in this path of what I really want to you know, and be on the, this path? Uh, and you're going to be fine as long as you are being your authentic self. Now, September 4th, Wednesday, Mars will move into Cancer. Whoa. Uh, so Mars is going to be in Cancer all of September and all of October. So two months. Two months. Nope, not two months. I'm lying to you. I'm lying to you. Mars is going to retrograde in January or during our birthday season. <laughs> okay, Aquarius. And so, and then it's going to go direct. Uh, Mars is going to be in Cancer for about like four or five, six months. It's going to be there for a while. Okay. There's something in January, February, you're coming back to around this time. That has to do with work, health, or pets. All right. Because uh, this is your sixth house, overlapping the new moon in Virgo and Virgo season that natively rules the sixth house. So Mars and Cancer is in its fall, by the way. And what that means is Mars, you know, he's he's aggressive. You know, he's he, he drank, he, he's had his uh, protein shake and he's ready to go. But Cancer is a sign that's more about emotions, intuition, like I want to be home. I want to be with my family. I want to be with my loved ones. No, I don't want to go to the party. No, I don't want to do that. So there is that a little bit of, you know, emotions can be heightened. Mars is just like, boop, 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 boop. and it's for the collective, by the way, Mars and Cancer. So you're going to notice that people's emotions are going to be a little bit heightened. They may be a little bit ultra sensitive. People could be snappy. Remember crab cancer is a crab so it's got the pinchers and they can come out uh especially listen it only it really just depends on the aspects that are happening as well and we'll get to some of them uh starting i think next week uh you know uh, but anyway uh just know this is going to be in your sixth house of your daily activities and your routines which includes health and work and you know again like i said like pets is part of this but anyway it just means this is your time for emotional growth that's what Mars and Cancer is, okay? Mars and Cancer, emotional growth, even like intuitive growth, uh, a lot of focus on home, a lot of focus on home, family, uh, your loved ones, even being, you know, protective of them. You're going to feel it. I, I actually have Mars and Cancer in my chart. So, yes, I have worked with Mars and Cancer since the day I was born. <laughs> Um, so I, I know Mars and Cancer well, but I know how to handle the energies. Remember, you can control these energies. You can use them to your, in terms of in your favor. But let me give you an example. While I'm here with you, Chris, I haven't done this for any other sign. 
I'm going to give you a little example. Mars and Cancer. So when I said emotions can be heightened, Pinterest can come out. I remember when I was young and, you know, the older you get, the, the easier you can handle these aspects in your chart, right? Uh, that are in your natal chart. But when I was young, I remember coming home from college and going shopping with my mom. We were, I don't know, we were like TJ Maxx or something. I remember we got into like the, like one of the checkout lines opened and we got there at the same time someone else did like right at the same time, but we were there maybe like three or four seconds earlier and the cashier just, you know, came to us because we were there. But the other person that came from, they thought they were first. And so they uh, kind of gave my mom a look, a, a really nasty look. This is in Georgia. We're in Georgia. Okay. Duluth, Georgia. Uh, and, you know, mumbled something. Okay. And so that Mars and Cancer, that protective energy, protecting my family, came out in a really strong way. Were words exchanged? Yes, absolutely. Did they come from my mouth? Yes. But, you know, that was me like when I was 18, 19. But that's what I'm saying with Mars and Cancer. Just always be responsive, not reactive. Okay. That's the thing, but you are going to be, you know, in a sense, like overly protective of the people that you care about and the people that you love. All right. Um, so keep that in mind. And by the way, with, uh, the new moon in Virgo, it, there there definitely is mom energy okay there's definitely mom energy because we're talking about virgo we're talking about uh, uh the moon uh, it's just it's just what it is so you may be in touch with your mom you may be you know or a maternal figure at, you know just someone that's a maternal figure as well or the mom in you could be really you know strong right now anyway uh september 6 mercury square uranus again there may be some news that you get unexpected around home around the foundations of your life but honestly at this point this is not we've already had two of these right mercury swearing uranus this is the last of it so we've already you've already gone through these and it could be like something it's not as strong of other ones but still just know that something could happen around this time where it's just news that you uh, get but the other thing is it could be you remember you've got some powerful energy happening here where uranus is retrograde so it could be you going within to have this inner breakthrough okay inner breakthrough for uh, 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 for your path forward and then we get to saturday september 7th sun opposite saturn sun in virgo saturn in pisces remember the virgo pisces act Access, two mutable signs, you know, adaptable change. There may be some change. Don't be harsh on yourself to this day uh, because that's uh, sun and uh, sun up as it's Saturn brings that out. Sometimes you can be like too like self-critical um, and, and it can be with with others as well. Remember, Mars just went into cancer. So be responsive, not reactive. Stay frosty. Be cool. You'll be fine. Have a Fanta. You're going to be fine. You know, and there may be some changes that are happening around this time that you're adapting to. Uh, but you're staying within Saturn's boundaries. Remember, Saturn is you're still working with Saturn's energies and he's, you know, really put on the aviators at this point. But you're working with this energy because Saturn is karma. Saturn's going to reward you. You hang in there. You got to work with his energies. And when I say work with his energies, he just it's he's all about discipline, responsibility, and you're going to be fine. And when I say he rewards you, listen, in a, you know, a few weeks, Mars is going to try and Saturn. And then the week after that, Venus is going to try and Saturn. So you're going to start seeing those rewards pay off. All right, so uh, let's get to it, Aquarius. Let's see what's going on for you for the week of September 2nd to the 8th for Aquarius, Sun, Moon, and Rising. And if you want to read for any other placements in your chart, you are absolutely welcome to Aquarius. Let's get to it. Let's get started. See what is going on for ooh, you. All right, Aquarius. You like how I like just kind of like stared at you that entire time. It's like, Aquarius, I do a traditional cult across spread. Uh, if we need to pull clarifiers, we will. You know we will. I got you, Aquarius. Team Aquarius, we're in this together. We're in this together. What are you learning? What are some of the new things you're uh, you like expanding in your life? Because that's going to be something that's going to be happening. Uh, and I'm sure you, you may be feeling it. Anyway, let's get started. Oh, wow. Okay. Okay. Ooh. 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 Yeah. This is good. You're good. You're good. I love this. Hello. I mean, yeah, I'll do it. I'll give you my, 
I'll give you a mic drop. I'll give you a mic drop. Uh, wow. Wow. Queen of Swords, let's get started. I love this. All right. So you're not you're not messing around. You're not messing around. You moving into the week. You're just like, nope. like get. Let me do this. Let me do this. Uh, this is someone who is. She's left all her emotions at the door. OK, this is someone that's very strategic. This is someone who is just wants the truth. Nothing but the truth. Who's honest with herself, who knows her truth. She's gone through a lot. She's sitting this throne for a reason. She earned her spot here. OK, uh, she's very much like the justice card. Very. She actually is Libra, by the way. Um, so this is really great. And I, I mentioned legal matters. That may be something. That may be something, by the way. Be, you know, with Libra ruling your ninth house, uh, and because she is very, you know, she is like very fair, very diplomatic. And even though she's left all her emotions at the door, I say that because uh, it's a good thing. She sometimes you don't want your emotions to cloud your judgment. You know, you see her head above the clouds like this is singular thought. Again, true perception. This is you uh, moving towards something, seeing the truth in something, seeing your truth in something. OK, and someone else can be involved here, by the way, especially because she is Libra. But you see her hand. She's saying, come forth. Let's speak. Let's talk. So she's not like completely, you know, whatever. But it, it, it's more about that clarity. Swords are thought it's a uh, logic intellect processing things all right now and communication by the way that's gonna do you so much good okay ten of cups and the heart of your spread wow in the heart of your spread this is happy everything this is happy everything one thing i don't want you to forget is that you got jupiter and gemini in your fifth house really maximize that moment jupiter's gonna be in gemini until about june you're really gonna feel more of like the goodness of jupiter and gemini like mm, you know uh, once we move these past the uh, you know saturn squares but anyway um that's happy everything that's happy everything all right this is you see the happy family the happy couple the kids a lot of innocence in this card uh you know with innocence there is no like doubt or you know worry hey, this is uh, absolutely wonderful you see the house on the hill this is great a lot of enlightenment in this card remember cups are your feelings emotions love relationships it's you know intuition it's wonderment as well this is wonderful it's wonderful do you like that i'm gonna have to entertain you while i drink this Mm-hmm. 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 Okay. Uh, so, yeah, it seems like there is something that you're moving into that, it. I mean, this this week is just going to feel really good for you. This is going to be an absolutely wonderful new moon for you. It's going to be a very transformative new moon for you. And there's, again, a lot of family energy that's happening, and that can be, you know, loved ones and whatever you consider family, right? We live in a generation where we choose our family. So like me, for instance, my family, my logical family is in Georgia, but I got my family here in New York City. So uh, just feeling really good. I love this. I love this. But yeah, children could be like a really big thing for you as well. Now, you also have strength, but you have strength in your challenge area. Just continue to, well, here's the thing. There may be a point where you may want to, uh, reconnect with whatever brings you that courage, that inner courage, that strength, that uh, determination, like I can get this done because it is in your challenge area. And the other thing is, is that there may be something that really does test you this week that tests your happiness and your joy this week. Just remember to, uh, when I say tap into that sort of strength, ask yourself, where do I find that strength? What, you know, gets me up, you know, it, you know, out of bed and I get me excited. And, uh, so uh, what are the things I believe in and I have faith in all of that, all of that, you know, it can be God, it can be the universe. It can be the, your children. It can be, um, Elijah Wood, whatever it is. Like it's just wherever you find that strength, really tap into it this week. Okay. There also is a sense of resisting things you know you shouldn't be doing okay that is uh there could be a part of you that you know even like that analogy i made with like that mars and cancer a part of you that's it may be coming out and it's like rawr, with you know the lion hair and anyway uh but just uh it, it, no there are some things that may you know if you're the bear someone may be poking you this week so just really tap in okay the other thing that's coming up big message come through is like there could be someone else that is uh, maybe feeling a little ego driven this week that you just have to keep your eye on. Okay. And say, listen, well, let's 
Come on, let's see eye to eye here. Let's see eye to eye. Let's vibrate at high frequency. Now, you got the hair fire, and this is one of the reasons why you got the hair fire in your crown. And so there is a sense of like, yeah, you have reached this level of like spiritual uh, awareness, and uh, it feels really good. It feels really good. A lot of wisdom in this card. You can see the two columns here, uh, you know, from Solomon's temple. But he is a connector between the divine or physical world, a uh, big leader as well. And there is a sense of, remember I said, you may be setting up new system structures for yourself. Now, what's really interesting is about that is it is because Pluto is moving back into Capricorn uh, in your 12th house. The 12th house is up here. It's the subconscious. It's uh, intuition. It's, uh, you know, and you got the hair fun in your crown. So this is really great. I mean, you, uh, I mean, you're the keeper of the keys. A lot, again, this is someone who likes traditions okay saturn is your former ruler still your ruler but you know share you share it with uh uranus um and so there is just it just seems like there is going to be something traditional base that you may be thinking about moving forward something that has worked for you as part of this big breakthrough and restructuring things in your life or some of y'all could just completely do something new here especially with this ten of cups now you have the two of swords in the rootier spread, uh, yeah, there is going to be a big decision. It honestly feels like something you've been sitting on for a while. Um, I'm going to clarify that. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you're, you know, let's, let's make that decision and let's move forward. Okay. Let's make that decision. It's time. If, if you don't make that decision, that eclipse is going to make that decision for you. Remember, you want to control your reality. You controlled your reality, all right? So work with these aspects that, yeah, okay. So you work with, you because you got the nine of swords, all right? So uh, the feeling that I was getting with the two of swords here is, yeah, there may be something with partnerships, something with love even that you're overthinking, can't decide over. It could even be something work-related, by the way, uh, something that brings you a lot of uh, pleasure, something that brings you a lot of joy, but really connect intuitively emotionally you see all the swords stacked over his head it just seems like there's something that you've been sitting on maybe like resistant about it's time it is time to make that decision okay you don't want it to weigh over you all right now uh you make that decision you're gonna be free you're gonna be good you got the net of cups someone who's very whimsical someone who is very you know dreamy and romantic and uh you know he chases his dreams but this is also he's also like the knight in shining armor so they're like when i talk about partnerships and relationships there could be something coming through that is really great and it could be this like bounty of like abundance and money like money bags <laughs> uh and i say that because knight of cups is pisces and remember you've got all this activity in pisces and your second house of money and wealth and whatnot but uh so it could be in a work capacity it could be just in some capacity of like money but it if not listen this could be just someone coming through uh that's 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 gonna be part of your journey all right and it may be something that you've been wanting and sitting on and it could be restoring a relationship with a partnership now the other thing is it could be you there could be a lot of things that you've been sitting on that you're just like okay i don't know if i want to move in this direction and maybe it is with a partnership maybe it is with a relationship maybe it's you seeking your uh uh creative uh expressions and whatnot let it creativity here you even see the wings of imagination on his helmet and his shoes but nonetheless all he wants to do is be emotionally fulfilled and i want you to be too you got the ten of cups here and you've got the eight of pentacles in your future love it all right so this is dedication this is being laser focused working 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 knowing that you know this person is so dedicated he's removed himself from the village to continue to go after his legacy go after you know uh, the, his finish line he's not distracted at all this is that what i was talking about i mean this card is attributed to sun in virgo and so remember we are in virgo season the sun is in virgo and remember what i said just that work energy that day-to-day -day responsibility duty but just know that uh whatever you're doing it you're moving into a place where you're definitely going to be very focused you're going to be very focused it's like no messing around no more but you still got the ten of cups it is going to be a joyful week for you uh and you are definitely going to move into this rhythm. There's something happening here. It's like Karate Kid energy with the uh, Eight of Wands, like wax on, wax off. 
perfection makes perfect or you know practice makes perfect or or what remember i said virgo season and virgo energy striving for perfection so uh but just know you don't have to be perfect it's just as long as you're putting in that energy and you know you're doing your best like that's good enough okay so really great now let's get to your stuff Aquarius oh my goodness if you like this reading it'd be great if you like subscribe leave comments tell me tell me what's going on team Aquarius um what else and you know I love y'all are amazing yeah you, 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 uh, thank you so much for being here y'all are amazing all right let's let's yeah yeah, yeah. You're, you're good you're good you're good you're you're gonna be fun you're gonna be 1000% great here I really love this I mean really wow oh wow okay you got justice Remember, I, I always say take action. Action, you know, actions have consequences, all right? So be mindful of the actions that you take. Be also mindful of the actions you don't take because inaction have consequences too. Now, it does seem like there are, uh, I mentioned legal matters. Did I do that earlier? I mean, you've got your South Node in Libra. There may be something ending there with, with, with something with legal matters. I mean, it is the judge here, right? Uh, justice, but also just know that karmically because karma is highly associated with justice and with saturn by the way remember you're going to be rewarded take those actions and 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 you control your reality so you're going to be rewarded all right you're going to be rewarded a lot of y'all may be in a place right now especially with the two of swords coming up in the rudiard spread uh at a place where you're asking yourself um you know, am I on the right path? Am I doing the right thing? Is this, you know, you might have up like a lot of those questions. Just remember, tap into that sort of the strength that I said. Don't overanalyze anything. Uh, you've got the hair fine in your crown. So I just feel like this is going to be a good week for you where you see that justice will be served for you. Okay. Now you also have the six of cups in your external factors area. I love that for you. How some nostalgic moments of uh, nostalgia is it's uh, like uh, proven to through research to improve mental wellness and well-being and uh, I'm sorry, mental health, well-being, uh, everything that I said, you know, when I talk about like that health aspect of what's happening this week. Um, so have this nostalgic moments. Think about the time that you went to, uh, you know, Marshall's with your mom in, you know, fourth grade, whatever it is. Like, you know, y'all had a fun time. Someone, you know, you know, you bought that big old rabbit and, you know, uh, you dropped on the way to the car, okay? And it, you know, a car ran over it. Whatever it is, y'all laughed. It was like a dollar. Anyway, have those nostalgic moments. It's, it's, this hot card is highly associated with nostalgia, but again, it is the biggest house in tarot. So that's what I talk about. Like, you're, it's showing up here as well that feeling like you can let your hair down, you can let your guard down. Be it your, there's comfort, there's security in this card there's a sense of like everything is harmonizing for you you see that with the eight of pentacles too okay now hello to a cup so yeah a lot of y'all are uh that's something that you're moving toward love relationships again remember i said you got jupiter and gemini in your fifth house of love and relationships uh for pretty much a year okay for uh, well what is it yeah, yeah yeah for for almost for almost a year 10 months um Jupiter brings out expansion, that growth, and just continue, just get, uh, don't overthink things. It can be platonic. It can be also work related as well. But there is something that you're seeking where it's, but you've got to take that action. Okay, you've got to take that action. Uh, but this is a lot of passion here. This is the true love card, the twin flame card in layman's terms, right? The soulmate card, but uh, a lot of healing energy. So you could find a sense of self healing when you do take that action and it starts manifesting with this new moon in Virgo because you're setting intentions. And then lastly, wow, are things going to happen for you? Wow. So a lot of things are about to land for you uh, in terms of creative projects, things that you're ambitious, your ambitions, passions, uh, even work related matters, especially because we're talking about the wands here. But wow, wands completely aligned. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. I mean, this is, I mean, these are the wands in their happy place. Okay. Wands in their happy place. All right. And so, uh, the other thing is eight of wands, it's attributed to, uh, Sagittarius. It's a Sagittarius card. Sagittarius rules your 11th house of your hopes and wishes and dreams. Things are good. Things are looking really good for you, Aquarius. You just gotta get just, you gotta make that decision. There's something that you're all, you're, you're you got, you gotta, you're gonna, it seems like you're making a big decision actually. Um, 
but uh, and I say it's big because you may have been sitting on it for a while. And if it's not a decision, it just could be you needing to be in touch with your emotional side, your intuitive side to really going within and doing that work. OK, and matching the frequency of the hair font in your crown. And so Aquarius, y'all are amazing. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you like this reading, it would be great if you like, subscribe, leave comments. Uh, next week, we'll talk more about the aspects of next week. Another big week, Aquarius. Y'all are amazing. I'll see you next week. All right. Bye-bye.